All right, so now back to what we're talking about here. Uh, histamine is an important gene. This HNMT gene, like this person in this slide, does not have a lot of HNMT gene defects. But they still might have a lot of inflama inflammation, systemic inflammation, even though they don't have any defects in this pathway. Why? Because they have environmental things that are causing this inflammation. Remember, histamine is a product of an immune response. Histamine is made by your mast cells. And in the, in the presence of an antigen or an allergen, you're going to produce a lot of histamine. So when I have an allergy to pollen, I'm producing a lot of histamine. That's why I have the symptoms. Now, normally, if you don't have any HNMT gene defects, these genes should be working correctly, should be making the enzyme that breaks down histamine and gets it out of your tissue so you don't have quote-unquote allergies. Does that make sense? But if you have a hyperexposure to an allergen or you have an autoimmune disease or you have an antigen that's present constantly that you haven't identified nor gotten rid of, you have this ramped up immune response that's firing all the time. So you have excess histamine. So even in the presence of no genetic defects, you can still have a histamine problem. Follow me? So if the patient has symptoms of hyperinflammation, systemic inflammation, you want to look at, from my perspective, you want to find out why first, right? Why does this person have systemic inflammation? Do they have an autoimmune issue? Do they have an immune system that's constantly turned on? Do they have an antigen that's present? Do they have HNMT gene defects? So again, it's one piece of the puzzle. But if I have a patient that we're only doing a genetic consultation and they have a whole boatload of defects here, they're going to have, most likely, have issues. So systemic inflammation issues can range from you know, headaches, chronic, I mean, go on with a list of symptoms a mile long. So I'm going to give you an example. I had a, a, a mother and father come with their young girl who um, had ADD, ADHD. This kid was literally bouncing off the wall, and I'm not kidding you when I use that phrase. Already gluten-free, already dairy-free, we did a genetic test. We did a 23andMe on this child. She had both her HNMT, I think she had a defect on every one of these genes but one. And uh, she also had multiple comp defects, which we're going to talk about down the road, which affects the neurotransmitter dopamine. So she had excess dopamine because of the comp defects, excess histamine. So we put this child on a low histamine diet and we cut out proteins as well because proteins are going to be the precursor for dopamine. So we cut out the precursors for dopamine because they had excess dopamine and we cut out histamines in the diet so that we would not continue to feed this cycle. The parents called me several days later saying we have a completely different child. And she said no you don't understand. It, we've never seen her before like this. She's a different human being. I had a Tourette's syndrome child. Tourette's syndrome is where they can't stop blurting out expletives because they have excess dopamine in the left frontal lobe, which is where your, your Broca's area is for speech. And with that excess dopamine, it's a very excitatory neurotransmitter. It just builds up and they just have to express something. That child had a very similar uh, genetic variant picture. Did the exact same thing with them. Cut way back on proteins, which are feeding the dopamine picture, and cut off histamines. The mother uh, contacted us two days later, said that the Tourette's was down 80%. So you can make a tremendous difference in a person knowing what their genetic picture is. Does that make sense? So don't take this lightly. You can see dramatic changes in people. So why would you, this is HNMT which gets rid of histamine in the tissues. There's the pathway. 
histidine goes down several pathways. This is a low histamine diet sheet that we use um, that uh, is assuming people are on a paleo diet already. Uh, and we send this to people. Things that are in the gray area are higher in histamine. Those are the things you want to cut out or decrease or eliminate if it's really bad. So anything that's aged has more histamine. Eggs are in there in the gray area. Eggs have histamine in them. The more aged the eggs are, the more histamine they're going to have. If you have your own chickens and you're eating fresh eggs, they have a lot less histamine. Even leftover food has more histamine than it had yesterday. So fermented foods that are so good for your gut, why are they so good for your gut? Because they contain so many probiotics, also have a lot of histamine. So I said, we can't use fermented foods with a person that's got a lot of HNMT and ABP1 defects. Okay, so we have to use other things. Does that make sense? We have to also be careful with glutamine because glutamine is very good to heal your small intestine. A lot of products have glutamine in it. A lot of gut healing products have glutamine in it. Our product that we created has glutamine in it. But you want to stay underneath a gram of glutamine a day. Especially if you have cancer because glutamine can feed your cancer. In some people that have a lot of GAD defects that we'll talk about later, and other glut defects, there's multiple glutamine genes, you want to stay away from glutamine altogether. Okay? Still following me? So I know it gets kind of complicated. Uh, it does. But it's complicated. There's just no other way to put it. You, you have to look at the big picture. I just wish it was like, okay, just stop eating this and all your problems are going to go away. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. So you have, to, you have to look at this puzzle of our body and look at it as a puzzle and there's a ton of different pieces and you know if you could get the majority of the pieces you can see what the picture is. Um, the, more picture, the more pieces you can put in there you can get a better idea of what the picture looks like. We're never going to be 20 years old again. We're always going to have degeneration um, there's no getting around that. We live in a fallen world, but the more pieces that you can get put together, you can get back to the level of health that you're comfortable with. 